You really can't have steampunk without, well, lots of brass and copper pipes. So we have a whole puzzle based on copper pipes and do we have their any, relation to each other. Do we have any brass pipes? No, not yet. We'll make some brass pipes. Shut it. So we've got some nice big fat three and a half inch copper pipes here. And uh, the point of this puzzle is going to be to equalize the pressure on these two pipes. We've had lots of cool stuff to do this with. One of the really cool things I found for this guy is this little four-way manifold here. Um, and it's got these little connectors on it that are apparently called PEX connectors. And for the PEX connectors, is it you've pecs? got your... Like it is plural? PEX. Like with an X, P-E-X. Ah, oh, not like gun you show can Read the package, man. You got your special little rings here. And your special little rings go on your special little copper pipes. And you got your stupid expensive special crimpers. And they don't actually really work with the half inch copper. Tell them why. Copper pipe. Uh, it's too big. Uh, this stuff is made for, it's a, a special proprietary plastic pipe, uh, hose pipe, kind of like a hose. And um, I'm sure it works great for keeping things watertight, but it doesn't look steampunk. So. So what we've got now is, what is this, half inch flex yes. copper pipe here. And what we're going to try to do right now, our little PEX connectors are, are too, too big for the interior of our pipe here. So what I'm going to try to do is widen them out, try to flare it out to accept that. And so to do that, I made this little tool right here. I took a piece of aluminum stock and milled it out on our lathe. Here's some footage of me doing a little bit of the final work on making this. I had to mill down to a diameter, put on a taper, and then mill down to a final diameter. And the point of this is trying to set a taper and then set an interior diameter here such that you flare this pipe out, but it's not a funnel. It kind of flares out then up a little bit. Hopefully that works to accept onto this so that they make a nice tight fitting. We don't need this to be watertight or anything. There's not actually going to be any steam in this. We just want it not to fall apart. Moving on down here, uh, we took our pipes and we milled out these slots with, uh, with these guys here. These are going to be holding our 32-inch uh, LEDs. They're going to be part of the puzzle. Uh, put those on the CNC machine, as you can see. Made a special sled for that. So that the pipe is going to sit uh, flat and uh, register to the right point. And then milled out that oval to receive that guy, and that'll be uh, receive all the LEDs uh, that'll be part of the indicator for this. And um, so the way these things are actually going to work, you might be looking at this and wondering how the hell you're going to put an LED in there. This is only the top part that the LED is going to shine through. We're actually going to use a piece of quarter inch Sintra that goes on the underside of this. The LED is going to sit tight into that and just poke up into these little recesses on the back of this guy here. And then that those LEDs are then going to be controlled by a series of shift registers, which are then going to be controlled by a microcontroller. And that's going to have each one turn on individually. You know, almost like it was like, I don't know, like, like rising up, like a, like Lots a rising. Lots of wires coming up very soon in our future. So I'm going to be trying to put the flare with this in this pipe here. And I've got this mask just because normally I'd be using safety glasses, but it's so muggy right now that the sweat and the humidity and the moisture fogs up the glasses when it's so close to my face. So we'll be using this, just, just so I can see. And the gloves are so I don't burn my hands. what I'm doing is I've never actually done this before this is all throwing signs at the wall here but my thinking is that if I heat this up it's going to be more accepting of taking a taper from my aluminum mandrel there and so I am just getting this to what I consider reasonably hot to be malleable which is to say this hand is starting to get a little warm on the metal so that's about hot enough now we're going to try to take this taper, stick it in here with this hammer.
Now so far you can see that I've bent this pretty good. Now on the final result, that's not going to matter too much just because this pipe's going to get bent anyways to accept it, but we're going to see... You almost stuck your hand in the fire. <laughs> we're going to see if this is actually a feasible plan here. Because, Like I said, this really is just throwing science at the wall. Well, I was able to get it out, so that by itself is a good sign. So let's take one of these and see what kind of fit we get out of it. I'm not expecting miracles, but... So, you can see it's kind of taking it, and I would have to kind of smash it in place after this, but I think this might actually be a feasible, feasible solution. That worked, and that's good, because uh, not everything does. Uh, stay tuned next uh, week, a couple of days, and we're going to get these things lit up. We're going to get a gauge working on them, and I'll show you uh, some bit about that. I'm making the gauge work. I don't care what he says. Uh, and speaking of things not working, also, uh, we're going to be showing you fairly soon. We get about three or five versions of uh, some electronics hardware for our main device puzzle and uh, some various fail points on that one that we're going to start hacking through and show you where we landed 11 versions later. Bye-bye.